Hi folks, hard milling. It's pretty funny. What is a drop of material to some shops is different for me than it is for others because that is a piece of D2 that's hardened to 60 Rockwell. Tool steel that is just hard as could be. We're gonna machine it, we're gonna service it, and we might even try thread milling it. We'll see how we get along. I'm here with Brian Rowe. He is our local Mitsubishi tooling rep. I met him when we first bought our Haas and we actually got the ASX 245 that we used to give us some really awesome service finishes on our aluminum parts. Brian had mentioned back, I think we were at PMTS, a uh, card to that video here, want to try some hard milling. And this is so fascinating to me. Uh, we did do a video a while back on hard milling and we got along great and it really opened my eyes to it. This though is kind of taking it to a whole nother level. We've got this guy here, and this is a three quarter inch, five insert, high feed mill. So we're gonna take a very strange depth of cut. It's kind of like a high feed machining cut. So it's eight millimeters step over out of a 20 millimeter tool, only about eight thousandths or 0.2 millimeters depth of cut. So you can see here in the Fusion 360 simulation, this is not at all what we're used to machining. And you actually get a chip thinning effect on the face of the tool. I'm used to chip thinning on the side of the tool. So let's chuck this guy up and see how we get along. We are using a end mill chuck. This one's from Mari Tool. And this is one of the most rigid and secure ways to hold a tool. Obviously the downside is it's rather large and they're not inexpensive, but it's perfect here where I really, really want security and holding. Use the spanner wrench and you tighten this down until it stops. You'll feel it. And it's nice because there's not like a torque value where you kind of stop at a certain torque value. It literally just bottoms out. And card here to the new MYC CNC page we just put up on starting to walk through the different types of tool holders for your machine. On our adaptive speeds and feeds, 246 surface feet per minute, almost 16 thousandths of feed per tooth. Again, taking an eight millimeter optimal load or width of cut and just under eight thousandths of an inch depth of cut. Folks, look at the surface finish, and it's really, really smooth. Uh, great sidewall. It's funny, you see some imperfections, you can see some deflections and feel that, but it really is pretty smooth. And remember, this is a roughing tool. So the idea here is you can rough out a part in its soft state, send it out for heat treat, and then you can come back and do some finished machining on it, which you could use this tool for if you kind of had to rough out some of that last bit, or Brian was saying you can now just have pre-hardened blocks. So for tool and die shops, for stamping shops, or anything where you need material in that hardened state, you can use a tool like this to literally machine the whole thing hard and you can skip that often one or two week lag time and cycle time of freighting it to heat treat, waiting for heat treat, getting it back, QCing it, making sure it's okay, then starting to do, to do your machining. That's really cool. Let's try some surfacing. This is a 10 millimeter or about 0.4 inch four flute ball end mill. The goal is to surface out this dish. We're going to start with an adaptive to rough it out about 500 surface feet per minute and about six thousandths of an inch feet per tooth. No more than 30 thousandths of an inch maximum step down. Seeing the machine move like this, see it cut steel that is so hard, seeing the service finish is coming off, really cool. 
for that scallop, same feeds and speeds, with the exception of doing a step over of about six thousandths of an inch. Shout out to Rob Lockwood for some of the information he's helped put out there on learning why and what toolpaths are and do. The problem with scallop here is that it self intersects and that gets worse because of the oval shape of our part. And as we zoom in, we see two related problems. One is that the actual scallop height, the distance between the toolpaths, changes between the lines and the corners. And the second is that those corners mean that the machine is effectively slowing down or stopping and changing direction. And when we want to try to get the best surface finish as possible, we want smooth, fluid, continuous motion, not stop, jerk, reverse motion. Amazing. Keep in mind, this is 60 Rockwell D2. Looks pretty good, feels absolutely amazing. Feels incredibly smooth. Folks, this is potentially the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life on a CNC machine. Take a look at this tool. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, another thread mill. We've seen these before. Well, first of all, it's going to thread mill 60 Rockwell D2. I know I've said that a lot, but it's impressive. Here is the crazier thing, and I am not making this up. We are going to thread mill this M12. It's about the equivalent of a half by 13 uh, thread for us US folks. We're gonna thread mill that blind with nothing having been created prior to making this. If it weren't on video, I wouldn't believe it myself. Folks, I told you, I'm not kidding. I was looking at Brian as we're going into the cut here and I'm thinking, we're going to break this tool. This is insane. You ready for this? Okay, so it's actually not as exciting to watch as it sounds, but the technical capabilities of this is insane. It's absolutely insane. Here is how we program this in Fusion 360. Some quirky things that we had to do uh, to make this work, including setting up the actual tool to run counterclockwise, which counterintuitively is you do by unchecking the clockwise, because this tool is cuts left-handed, quite strange, something I've never done. Then we have to thread mill top down because obviously we can't plunge to the bottom of the hole. We don't have a hole yet. So that you do that with the conventional. We put in the thread pitch. That would look better if we had converted this file over to uh, metric. You would see it that way. And here are our feeds and speeds. This is just absolutely amazing, folks. I, I, can't, I cannot believe this. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why all of them are tool four, it's because we just swapped out the same tool holder in our Haas. So that's not normally something that we would do, uh, but wanted to make mention of that because I'm sure somebody was watching this thinking, why does he have all three tools as the same number? After we did the first hole and the tool didn't break, Brian said, you want to run a second hole? And I just said, yes, I have to see that again. Here's the thing. The camera doesn't really do it justice here. The thread quality was amazing. It's be beautiful to see how this cuts. Insane. Folks, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. I want to really appreciate Brian coming in and bringing in those tools to run this demo. And it's really cool to think about what you can do with these types of tools. I know I mentioned earlier, you know, die shops or stamping shops. Even if you're a knife maker, I know John Grimsman is doing this now, where he's avoiding the risk and hassle of having to send things out, get them, and then process them again. He's getting material done, hardened, and then machining it to final shape. And when things are hard, when you've got the right tools, they actually machine and cut beautifully. So really cool, really exciting to see this in a, really a form of technology. Again, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.